This is the Power Break Podcast number 056, titled Getting Set Through Prayer. Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobbrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. J2, you've been training again. I have been training. Yeah. Yes, sir, man. I've been trying to get get my uh, body a little slimmer. And it sounds like you got a good report from our doctor. Huh? I did, yeah. You know, it's funny. When I was in the office, I was like, hey, you don't happen to listen to the podcast, do you? He, he goes, no, I haven't yet. And I said... You need to, because you're like a main character. And he's like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, we talk about how we both go to you as a doctor. He goes, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but he said he was going to listen now. So, oh, oh, If you're listening, Howard, hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I got a good report, yes. Well, yes. I wanted to talk a little bit about the interview podcast, the second podcast of the week that we yeah. produce, and that is a podcast about – Perseverance. I like to interview people who are persevering through life, and it's very interesting stories we come across. We've uh, talked to a number of people from a business standpoint and have a, a podcast coming up with a man who uh, actually survived a plane crash. Wow. That'll be coming up soon here on the Power Break podcast on the interview uh, program. Well, anyway, uh, just to check that out, usually we released on Saturdays, although sometimes on Mondays, but uh, we like to... Uh, release that later in the week. The uh, podcast that JT and I do was released on usually on Tuesdays, and yep. um, we'd like to encourage you to listen to the other one. And of course, um, make sure you subscribe to the Power, Power Break podcast and write us a review and also a rating there wherever you download the podcast. All right, JT, did yes, you sir. ever have any pregame rituals that you'd go through when you played college football? Oh yeah, yeah, and baseball. Whatever I played, I always ended up I, – I would say probably baseball players are the most ritualistic people I know. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was no exception in high school and when I played American Legion ball and stuff. I mean, it was always – when I got up to the plate, it was the exact same thing mm -hmm. every time. We right say foot, the more, more complicated foot. it is, the, the better it is. It, it actually is a way to forget the past and look forward to the future and just put your mind at ease, right? Yeah, it gets you there. Okay. That's what it does. It puts you in that in that zone. How about you? Uh, well, uh, when I competed in the Ironman, one of the rituals that I always had was to write out a schedule of what I would do from the time I arrived at the, the race site to the time of the, of the race because, you know, when you're getting ready to do – 140.6 mile race. Um, there's a lot to go through your mind, and, <laughs> yeah. and there's yeah. a lot of ways to forget. And you really don't want to forget the things you need to do your bike and need to do for your equipment and your nutrition and your hydration, etc. So yep. I always wrote out ahead of time the schedule and then followed that precisely. And I would, you know, people come up and talk to you, and I say, well. I, don't mean to be rude, but I'm following a schedule here, so I got to pay attention. <laughs> otherwise, because well, I, I, I sometimes in races I I would forget, and next thing you know I'd be on my bike. Oh, I forgot my computer for my bicycle. So, oh, you know, yeah, those little yep. things. But how about uh, how about any rituals do you have to, as you start your day as a police officer? Yeah, actually. Um and once again, it's to get you there. It's to get you in the zone. One of the big things I do is I think about the different kinds of calls I can get, and I just remind mm -hmm. myself of what the first steps are. And the first steps are usually always the same. Like if it's an active shooter, I just remind myself, all right, step number one, get there safely, leave the siren on. And usually you wouldn't leave your siren on, but we know that active shooter incidents, we want to distract the person from what oh, they're yeah. doing and let them know that we're here. So um, we do that. Make sure you don't park on concrete, you park on a, well, unless it's a sidewalk, you park on a sidewalk or on grass because we know that later on, a lot of times ambulances can't get in because the police officer's cars mm. have jammed it. So there's just little things that you go through in your head. And I, I always go through the first order of okay. business for every call. And then, you know, if I have a robbery, all right, set a perimeter, see if I have a canine available, things like that. Like that's a ritual that I go through every single day that I go to work. Wow. On my way to work, and the reason why is because I know me, I'll forget, <laughs> and, and I don't well, want to think about it when it happens. I want to know that I just reviewed that, mm -hmm. so I know the steps. Well, that's yeah. part of the ritual is to actually get yourself set. 
Yep. And so is. as you were talking about your baseball days and your football days, that's exactly what you're doing is yep. getting yourself set. Okay. But, uh, you know, as a minister, uh, sometimes I have rituals on Sunday mornings too. Oh, uh, man, you know, of course. Yeah. Of course, I'm always up at four o'clock. It seems to be, it seems to be the time. Man, that, that four it. o'clock thing. I'm still some, trying to recover from you telling I, me that. <laughs> sometimes I just cannot sleep past um, 345 either. So uh, anyway, but um, I like to, you know, spend time in prayer on Sunday mornings, especially and and. Um, there's this little book that I read all the time. It's called The Valley of Vision. It was oh, the other, so good. Yeah, yeah. You know, the prayers of the Puritans. And I always like to read the one that has to do with the minister's preaching and begins by saying, I, I, I want to preach today, but I can't do it without your help, Lord. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's and, awesome. Yeah. So, and, you know, I think that's very important as a minister does that, that one of the rituals is to realize as much as you're studied up and much as you've prepared, Unless the Lord um, brings the help, it's not going to be much. So, right, you know, right. The point is, we all have some regular activities that we carry out in our regular or not so regular activities. We might call them rituals, habits, routines, whatever. Not a bad thing, but the question is, where is prayer in that? In the days that Jesus was uh, going to call his disciples, he went out into the mountain and prayed all night and continued there in prayer. And then he came and called his disciples. It's been proven that the world says even that if you meditate daily, you'll find more success and less stress in life. But if you think about it now, meditated upon God's word and actually spent time in prayer, you're actually tapping into God's formula for less stress and true success. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a better coach? (laughs) Is there a better (laughs) life coach, people? That's right. (laughs) So... uh, we want to talk about that today on our program because getting set through prayer is what the Power Break uh, blog that I wrote. But uh, God's God's proven formula: yep. spending time in His Word and spending time in prayer. Yeah, yeah, and let's continue to talk about that, folks. If you have not been to BobBrewBaker dot com, there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff. If you want to know what Bob looks like, that's a good place to find out because he's got a picture or two up there. Um, there's none of me, and that's on purpose. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. We need to talk to the webmaster about that. <laughs> no, Eric, no, can no. we get a picture of JT up there? Face uh-huh. for radio. They're, that's all purposeful. Um, but if you have not gone to BobRubaker.com and checked out the blog, um, man, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, Bob was talking earlier in the program about how uh, the vlog comes out. Well, I guess it's not a vlog. It's not a video log. It's a um, podcast. So I, I, yeah. I, I always get confused with that stuff. Do you want to do video? Vlog, we can video. set up the video no, camera I don't here. Tell. Folks, if you'd like the JT, you know what JT looks like and have us do video. Just mention that when you write to JT at BobRubaker.com. That, that would require me to take a shower on Tuesday. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, let's let's keep going on that topic um, because your blog was about that. Um, and man, so good to get Monday at 7 o'clock when I woke up. This is really good. Getting set through prayer. Well, no, here's what I wrote about that baseball players are notorious for their pre pitch rituals, as JT was mentioning he was. And they, what are, they're doing, they're getting their minds off the last pitch and preparing themselves for what's ahead. Likewise, children are known for developing rituals as they prepare for bedtime. It's even been said that the more detailed the nighttime ritual for a young child, the more secure their life will be. Wow, really? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So. Are you, do your boys have nighttime rituals? Yeah, yeah, to not want to go to bed. That's that's a <laughs> ritual right now. Um, but no, of course they do. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. always shower, throw the boxers on, yeah, brush their teeth. For some reason or another, they won't brush their teeth in front of a sink. I don't get that. Like, oh, they like to walk around brushing their teeth? They walk around brushing their teeth, which I guess results in them brushing longer. Um, yeah, so that's kind of their ritual. And okay. then, then we go in and I always sit in the chair. And we talk about their day, um, you know, when we pray and then we go to bed. Wow. So, yeah. That's a good ritual. It is a cool ritual, yeah. Well, your, your boys are very secure then. Well, uh, where does a player come up? Uh, when, where does prayer come up in this? You know, you might ask uh, in, in our getting ready for each day. As I mentioned that Jesus spent time in prayer before he called his apostles, before he was led away and crucified and before other important events, you might say that he was getting set through prayer. 
The early church also practiced getting set through a time of prayer. After Jesus' resurrection and ascension, the disciples returned to Jerusalem to, to pray, which God used to get them ready for what was coming up in that day of Pentecost. Right. Yep. Before the church at Antioch sent out Barnabas and Saul for the work of the kingdom, the church spent time in prayer and fasting. Before the church ordained elders, they spent time in prayer and fasting. Yeah, I mean, throughout Scripture, all, and I can't remember, you're going to remember where the Scripture's from, but it says, if... If those, uh, if my people would seek my face um, and pray. And turn from their wicked ways. And turn from their wicked ways, yes. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 7. Wow. Verse 14. <laughs> I, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Man, wherever you went to school, that place is awesome. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, seeking his face is done through prayer. That's right. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's interesting when you, when you look at the, the fact that Prayer is more than a ritual, just a pointless ritual. It's a vital part of getting ready for what is ahead. What is ahead? Because unlike the rituals of baseball players or little children, prayer does more than just set your mind at ease and bring you a sense of comfort. Although it it should do that and more. It should get your mind off of your circumstances and help you to focus upon God, the Sovereign who rules heaven and earth. It takes your mind off of trying to control things in your power and places your mind on his power. Prayer takes your focus off self and places it on his love and mercy. In other words, prayer does more than just get your mind in gear or make you feel comfortable. Prayer helps in getting control of your thinking as you obediently focus your attention on God. Yeah, it's awesome. Getting set through prayer. Prayer does, uh, of course, help you face life, and, and if you have things coming up in your life, you express your dependency on God. It was Martin Luther who said that uh, once said that he had a busy schedule ahead of him one day, and it seemed he'd have no time to pray. So what did he do? He got up at 3 o'clock in the morning because he needed more prayer than normal. <laughs> See, and that was smart. Yeah. See, that's the opposite of what JT probably would have done. He would have been like, all right, well, I guess we'll just see. Maybe maybe I'll pray the night before, and we'll see if we can get it done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, God has promised that he would give grace to the humble, but it also indicates in the scripture over again that he gives a deaf ear to those who try to handle things in life on their own. Yeah, so. yeah, man, you know, that falls right into what we were talking about before we started the program with the Beatitudes, right? Yeah. It's the first Beatitude. It's about humble. Yeah. It's about being humbled before God, yeah. realizing he is who he is and you are who you are. So times that we are humbled is not a bad thing because it's actually humbling ourselves before God. And in First Peter chapter 5, it says that if we humble ourselves before God, he's the one who exalts us. He's the one who picks us up. Right. And we know it. Right. Well, feeling a need to pray is a grace in itself. Finding help to pray is God's grace. His hearing our prayers is God's grace. And the answers that he gives to us brings us all evidence of his grace. Living a life of dependency upon God, not only honoring him, uh, is honoring to him, but is a sure sign of Christian growth and maturity, also known as sanctification. Whoa, there it is. The S word. Yep. Big words. Yep. At any rate, uh, I wrote the article just to encourage you that spending time with God before your day gets going is not just a ritual to go through, but it is a time that you're getting set as you think about those baseball players or um, other athletes doing all kinds of rituals to get ready. Uh, it's good to get set through prayer. Jesus gave us the example. The early church gave us the example. And the scriptures over and, and, and again, and you'll find words to say that we should pray. And so, the encouragement from this article is that you'll spend time in prayer, getting set through prayer. The power blade. How do you like that? It's easy for me to Just say. Just roll with it. Roll with it. Yeah. The power break blog is found at bobrubaker.com. What else is going on, Bob? Anything new and exciting? Well, I want to step up here and talk about my book, Finding Delight in the Lord's Day, with a picture of the coffee cup and the cinnamon roll on the front of the cover. And uh, what's that about? Well, finding delight in the Lord's Day means that you recognize that the Lord's Day is special. Sunday's a special time. And he says in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 58, when God's people were turning their back on the Sabbath, his day, well, he said, you'll find delight in the Lord's Day when you start to delight in the Lord's Day. And that's oh. on the Sabbath. So yep. when we delight in it, when we make it a special day, and that cup of coffee is 
Um, my wife and I like to have Kona coffee on Sunday morning. Mm. Now, it's a special time, and it's too expensive to have all the time. Oh, yeah, I know that, yeah. But it's a special day, special coffee. And I grew up, and my mother always made cinnamon rolls on Sunday morning. Oh, so good. Yeah, yeah. it was always good. That's so, our that's our Christmas ritual, actually, is actually, cinnamon actually, rolls. Well, yeah. as, see, it's a ritual. So, yep. and, and so what I'm, I'm encouraging in that little book is Finding Delight of the Lord's Day is that making Sunday special with little rituals like uh, special food or whatever, yep. that you find it just, it's just sets your mind saying, this is a special day because it's the Lord's Day. Anyway, the book is Finding Delight in the Lord's Day. You'll find the link to it at bobrebaker.com. And while you're there, check out the sermon links from the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. All right, so here we go. It's time for What About This? Are you ready, my friend? I am ready, JT. Right. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. I'm always ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Folks, first, there's only one JT, uh, and I'm boy, glad he's working here. <laughs> thank goodness there's only one. Of course, you don't pay him very much. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that first paycheck. Um, <laughs> so am I. <laughs> <laughs> since the pastor, well, that's since, awesome. I love it. Since, <laughs> since we don't have a sponsor, and uh, you know, and hint, hint. And Howard, so, you know, uh, Howard yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> he would sponsor to, for us to go off the air. Probably true. Yeah, to stop talking about him. Um, so anyway, what about this? Is our time on the blog? Or yeah, on the uh, podcast? I keep saying blog. Yeah. Uh, on the podcast for questions and answers. So feel free to submit your questions to JT at com, and we'll get to answering those on an upcoming Power Break podcast. And folks, you can just tell this is a, these are real guys. We're not professional actors. Gracious, no, no, no. <laughs> we, we just uh, a couple of guys here with the, and that's why sometimes we get tongue tied and everything else. Yep. But that's where we are. So write to JT at com and send us your questions or feedback i like feedback feedback too whatever you got i'll take it yeah um all right question number one getting set through prayer seems to be very logical however um what if a person says i don't have the time because we all know we have a tendency to drop stuff when we start to get busy oh that's that's exactly right and matter of fact i would say that is a response from most people i have mentioned this before i think that One time in my ministry, you know, I think I was in Arkansas at the time. I was serving a church in Arkansas, and I was also ministering to people outside the church around the area. And and so there was a friend of mine who is a pharmacist, and he had his had his own pharmacy. So he was not only the pharmacist, but he also the owner of the of the store. Right. And he was complaining to me one day about the fact that he didn't get enough time to study the Bible, and 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 so he needed some help. And so I actually wrote a little book on um, getting the most out of uh, 15 minutes a day in God's Word. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And, and so I published the book, and I couldn't wait till I got it hot off the press. <laughs> yeah. And I drove up to his uh, office, and uh, when he had a moment, I said, hey, I want to show you something. And I showed him the book, and I told him he was the inspiration for the book. And I explained what was in the book, and he handed it back to me. What? He said, I don't have time to read that, and I don't have 15 minutes a day. I don't have time to read the book that you wrote for me? Yes. Yeah, that seems a little... I, I was yeah. I was kind of taken back, but then yeah. when I asked other people about it, I said, okay... That's a cop-out. Okay, 15 minutes is 1 96th of your day. <laughs> okay. That's a big, fat nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Um, we look at the motivation from the Lord Jesus Christ, as mentioned, he got up early to pray, yep. and he had a daily time in prayer. And we looked at the, as we pointed out, the early church, and we even mentioned Martin Luther, spending time in prayer. Well, the point is, you have time for the things that are most important. Right. You always do. Right. If you mark down something as important, what is the first thing you do? If you have something important, if tomorrow you had to do something that was important to you at 12 noon, Where would what would you do? It would hit my calendar there on my go. phone, and I'd set two alarms for it. Okay. Yep. Very good. So exact, that's exactly what I would recommend. If you're having a hard time finding time to get set for the day in prayer, yep. put it on your calendar. Yep. Because things on our calendar automatically go in our brain as something important. Okay. Just like I have on my calendar every week that I record a podcast with JT at 1230. 
on Tuesday. You do? Yeah. Oh, I got it in my calendar. That's why I don't forget, too. <laughs> <laughs> but we we both say that's important for us to do. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so that's we want to make that known to ourselves and to others. And so if somebody calls you and says, can I meet tomorrow or on Tuesday at 1230? Oh, I got an appointment. Yep. Okay. So whatever your time is, for me, it is 4 o'clock in the morning. But, yep. you know. It's not that time for me. I understand. Yep. But for whatever time it is, put it on your calendar. That's the first thing. Yep. Um, Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him, what? Deny himself. Yeah. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Okay. It's a daily time to deny yourself. Maybe 15 minutes of sleep. Yep. Maybe 15 minutes of not looking at the internet when you first get up or yep. not looking at Facebook or whatever it is. Yep. And say, okay, I'm going to hear from the Lord Jesus Christ. The apostle Paul talked about it as a way of discipline when he said, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain. And that's he's talking about discipline. And every athlete exercises self-control or discipline in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I run not aimlessly, but I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control lest after preaching it to others. I myself should be disqualified. Yeah, so one of my favorite scriptures. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. And Jesus even said, "Why do you call me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I tell you?" So yeah. there's precept, there's example yeah. in the scriptures. Remember Psalm one begins like this: "Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night." Yes. And then it says this. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. And all that he does, he prospers. So what are we saying here? Well, the conclusion is this. We do whatever we want to do. And if we really want to get set each day through prayer and meditation, we have to make time for it. We do that by putting it on the calendar. That's the first step. And then there's the specific, having a specific place, okay, a specific routine or habit. And then realize it takes about 13 weeks to establish this yep. as something that's concrete in and your mind. And that's real important to understand. And to make a yep. determination, that, and that's a, it's a good ritual. You so, know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer something that actually helped me. It actually changed my life when it came to prayer. Okay. And, and I got it from a friend I know that may be in this room. Um, so the perspective that I developed, and it was actually a revelation for me, was... There's only one thing that you take with you into the next world. There's only one thing that you take with you to heaven, and that's your spirit, mm -hmm. right? All this physical stuff, we put all of our time in, and it's going to still be here when we're gone. Mm -hmm. We can't take it with us. We put, I know as an athlete, I've put a ton of time into making my body better, mm -hmm. right? but I can't take that with me either. It's my spirit. So do I want to show up with a spirit that has got <laughs> no work into it, right? The, my soul has yeah. no, I haven't worked on my soul at all, but man, I look awesome. It doesn't If you think about it like yeah, that, you're right. like, man, it doesn't make any sense because the mental, like this, like we talk about all the time, the mental and the spiritual is as important as the physical. But we put all of our time and effort into the physical stuff. Even if it's the seeking yeah. after comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, we put a little bit of time into the mental stuff, you know, like I, I'll pull out my Lumosity and stuff like that. Oh, by the way, you can sponsor us, Lumosity, if you, if you hear that. <laughs> um, the Lumosity stuff, you know, I get out there and I try to keep my brain like going and I try to challenge yeah. myself with puzzles and stuff like this. But here's my spirit hanging out all by itself yeah. being drowned because I haven't put anything into yeah. it. That's, very, that's a good point, JT. Good point. And it's interesting, you know, when you talk about, uh, I, I like to encourage parents, of course, to make sure they teach their children spiritual things and to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord as we're encouraged in, in the book of Ephesians. But understand that if you're not do, teaching, taking time to teach your children, the world is. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so they're going to learn. They're going to learn. And, you know, we <laughs> you use, well we use the, the term here it. <laughs> and it's a Presbyterian church. We talk about the catechism, a shorter catechism or a larger, larger catechism. The catechism is teaching by question and answer. And I always say that if you're not catechizing your children, somebody else is. Yeah. yeah. And they're teaching them a worldview that maybe you don't like. So it comes back to us as well. 
And so that means we need to start out each day getting set for the day. Yep. And what better way to get set than through prayer? And if you want it to happen, put it on your calendar. Awesome. Are you ready for n- number two? There Question you go. number two. All right. This is from the mental standpoint. It's easy to beat yourself up over blowing off a day. I know I am absolutely guilty of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Amy, because she's such a strong spirit, she's really guilty of that, too. Beating Uh, yourself up? Beating yourself up when she misses something, right? When she misses anything, let alone her time with the Lord. Um, So how does a person get over that and just just move on? Because we all know we're going to do it. All right. Let's talk about grace. Ah, yes, my okay. favorite. Grace, God's unmerited favor. So we're, when, when we do these things to get set through prayer or spending time in God's word or serving God, it's not to obtain his favor because we have already have his favor. Right. Yep. And we've obtained that favor by his grace. That's unmerited favor. Yep. Okay, undeserved. And we have forgiveness, unmerited forgiveness. God is known for giving us second chance, third chance, fourth chance. <laughs> really yeah. yeah. Seven uh, times, 70. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. The story of the prodigal son in Luke 15, and that is exactly where we are. We're like the prodigal son that wants to run away, spend all we have, and come home. And what, what, would happen, what happened when the prodigal son started home? The father Couldn't ran wait. out to Could him. Could not wait. Because the yeah. father was waiting for him. Yep. Okay, so we've blown it. Okay, we, we come back. We come back to God and we admit it. Yep. All right. Now, God forgives. He gives grace to even bring us back, even to desire to come back. But as it says in First John, that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Right. So the time that we think we've, we're operating on a perfect standard, it may be our perfect standard, but we've still messed up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. And so if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to what? Forgive. Forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But it's repeated in 1 John chapter 1, and verse 10, and it says, If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So, mm. if God forgives us when we've messed up, I mean, he's, we're, we understand. We confess it. He forgives us. Who are we? Who do we think we are to not forgive and to beat ourselves up? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We think, once again, it goes back to Beatitudes, Beatitude number one, right? Humble yourself. Lord, the Lord is in charge of all of this. Yeah. And if he, all the promises from scripture um, in there over and over again is his love and forgiveness over and over and over and over and over and over over again. So, yeah, you just got to let it go. You really don't have the right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and who are we to beat ourselves up? And besides, it doesn't do you any good anyway. It just makes no. you feel bad. Yeah, just leaves okay. you in the same spot. Okay. And you may eat like like me. If I feel really bad, I'll probably end up eating bad too. <laughs> so then, next thing I know, uh, I'm I got to get up tomorrow, go for a run, and then I got to deal with the you know pound and a half ice cream that's rolling around in my belly. No that's donuts. Not good. Donuts. What? what you, go? <laughs> you know your stereotype, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, someone sent me a, a picture of his two sons eating oh, donuts. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> they were in heaven. But did you see a donut in my hand? You did not. <laughs> that's right. I had what every police officer survives on. Way too much coffee. <laughs> All right. Uh, last question. Are you ready? There you go. All right. We're going to turn to the physical here. This kind of mental thing, um, or this is kind of a mental thing, um, but it has to do with the physical, so just bear with me. What is a person to do when they find they are not working out as they had planned or would like to? Now, all of us make these grandiose plans. I'm going to lose this. I'm going to lose that. I'm going to start to eat. Um, You know, I'm going to start to eat. I, I would uh, vegan keeps popping in my head. That's not what I'm looking for. You know, natural or yeah. uh, keto or wh- whatever shenanigan we're up to, right? Um, mm-hmm. With that, um, but we find ourselves just not doing it. So what do we do? Well, it's kind of like the other one. It's more than just beat yourself up for allowing things to get in your way or and to get tough on yourself. Um, it is important to to be you know to be disciplined. Yep. 
Um, but interruptions are part of life. We understand that um, because we have a life other than training, so we have to deal with that. You and I have de- talked about that a number of times. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, JT is yep. not only a police officer, but he's also a father. And so when we were riding bikes all the time, at that time your schedule allowed it, and then all of a sudden you changed schedule and then didn't allow for that. That's it. No, so one day shift. It's so. a season, right? But it's good, first of all, to identify the things that do cause the interruption. Yeah. You know, what? what is that real cause? Is it really something that we haven't dealt with in our lives or is it something that we need to deal with um, maybe in a different way? Secondly, think things through. What is causing the interruption and how can you deal with it now? Maybe work around it, okay? Yeah. But, of course, you have your children have needs, and so can you work around it still? Maybe not. And so then the third thing is there are times you need to just let it go. And understand I just can't do this for a season. This is a season of life. Yep. And get past it and then – Come back to it in the future. What you can do now, though, and that is is maybe reassess your goals and look at it in a different way. I had a real eye-opener this past weekend. We, a bunch of us went up to San Antonio to ride hills. Oh, yeah. Howard and actually was, told me you, that. You know, yeah. and I was actually thinking that uh, maybe I was doing well because I put together this program for the – bicycle ride that I'm going to do next summer of the triple bypass out in Denver. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I was thought I was really making headway. And then I got a real assessment on how Bob Uh-oh. is doing Not on where heels. you want it to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> and too many pounds going up. To, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of back it off. And so I kind of changed my schedule a little bit and maybe what I need to do and yeah. realize also yeah. being re- more, a little more re- realistic where I need to be. But it was a good eye opener. Okay. Yeah. What say you? I mean, you have been training and, of course, you have interruptions in life, too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, you know, the scheduling it out is humongous, what you said. If I don't get up and I know what I'm going to do that day and I have the schedule locked down, now the schedule changes a little bit because usually whatever I estimate for time is off. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, whatever. Um, but, yeah, and I don't let myself get get distracted but as far as like the physical stuff if i have a goal i just have to be honest with myself that's something that i struggle with sometimes like if i want to get faster i need to get lighter Mm -hmm. and if i'm going to get lighter that means i need to cut down on my food intake i need to change my food intake or i need to run more so one of those things has to happen and i have to be cool with one of those Mm -hmm. things right um and you adjust Yep. Or you decide, well, that's not where I'm at. I don't have the time to do that right now. I'll do something else. Like with bike riding, you know, that is still a passion of mine. I absolutely love being on a bike, but I absolutely don't have two hours to do it together in any day mm-hmm. of the week, you know, um, it'll, it'll with come. all the responsibility. But, you know, I, re- I retire in a year from November. So guess what's going to come back? You know, he doesn't look like he's ready for retirement. Oh, boy, do I ever look like I'm ready for retirement. (laughs) (laughs) And do not talk to my wife about this at all. Well, folks, discipline does make the difference. We talk about it all the time. Discipline makes a difference in all aspects of life. And that includes um, recovering from the things you cannot do and maybe readjusting. And it takes discipline to rewrite your schedule and your goals and to be realistic about it. Discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. Well, check out today's show notes at BobRubaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today's show is number 056. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobRubaker.com and listen for Bob's answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Before we go here, just a quick word about my book called One Breath from Death. I was rehearsing what happened uh, to myself on uh, on April the 6th, 2005 with... uh, I was getting a chest X-ray the other day, and the, the 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 tech asked me if I've ever had any surgery, and I said, "Oh yeah." I said, <laughs> "Matter of fact, when you take a picture of my lungs this time, uh, keep in mind that I I not only had uh, lung biopsy, but I also had a um, uh, a blowout of my lung, and I had an insertion of a chest tube there. So you'll see Man. all those scars." Anyway, one breath from death is what I was in 2005, but like I say, the other part of that title is, now look what God can do. So I'm very thankful for that, but a recap of my experience and how God was with me through that and gave me great grace, I would like to share with you. Check it out on my website, bobrubaker.com. The book is called One Breath from Death. 
You know what? I just actually had an epiphany. Are you ready? Oh, my goodness, folks. What Boom. is this? I think for the interview podcast, I'm going to interview interview you reference to that experience. We'll, we'll set that up. All right. I think, I think that should work. I think people will really enjoy it. All right. So... Thank you very much, folks, for joining us for another Power Break podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at bobbrubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break podcast.